Hello, everybody, and welcome to Geopolitics in Conflict Show. We're going live today. Well, Our favorite day of the week. How are you? How's your week going so far? Well, I calmed down after all the reading all the news. <laughs> <laughs> I had, to get a, had to take a deep breath and say, is this for real? Yeah. But it is for real. Yeah, so no, Don't let it get to you. Don't <laughs> let it get to you. So. Anyway, we are so excited to be here. Uh, uh, please make sure, before we get into any of this, when you get a chance, please type in on the chat box where you are joining us from. I would always like to know at least what part of the world you are joining us from yourself. So we're so we're so excited. Uh, I am excited about live streams. And by the way, guys, uh, after this, believe it or not, we're going to get on, on a, a rumble. We're going to talk about CIA. So you all know why we can't talk here. So if you have time and your schedule permits and would like to know, just hop on on a rumble after we're done from here, which will be about 15 minutes. By the time we're done here, we'll jump on a rumble. So I just wanted to give you a heads up. So we're going to be talking about CIA and why it is issuing statements about China. So, you mean we're actually going to say what we really think? Yes, we are. Okay, <laughs> okay. Finally, so. So anyway, we're so excited to be here. as well. And by the way, guys, FYI, we will be doing those lives now on a weekly basis. So that's going to be, we made the decision, all of us as a team, that that's our way of communicating with you, connecting with you, exchanging ideas with you, and that's what we're going to be doing. So, Do you want to hear where some, some of our viewers are from? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, Chris Taliz, hello from Indonesia. Ooh. Tommy Putra is also in Indonesia. Hey, see you, Tommy Putra. Um Sotris is from Cyprus, Louis oh or Louise. Sorry, I don't know which Cyprus. one. Hi wow. from London. London. Uh, Rohan is from Guatemala. Mm. Comrade is from South Africa. Yeah. And by the way, uh, we noticed that uh, Athene Wu is joining us from somewhere. Is that correct? Somebody yeah, said yeah, it's yeah. 1 o'clock in the morning. That's <laughs> Tommy Butra. Thank you for doing Tommy, that. Good to see you all. So uh, we're so excited here. So. So what we're going to be talking about today is basically we're going to go further than what we talked about in the video about China and Taiwan and why the U.S. is quadrupling its troops in Taiwan and what does it mean? Moving well, forward. as you know, Corinne Jean-Pierre, who's yeah. the President Biden's press secretary, mm -hmm. said President Biden, in keeping with the one China policy, is increasing the, the U.S. troops in Taiwan by 400%. And we're also approving a 600, $619 million arms deal, which includes rocket launchers, anti-radiation equipment, jet planes, I'm going, hold it, that's a one China policy that they're honoring? Yeah, and, and, and what, I, what concerns me the most about all this is the pattern. Yes. This. So I'm seeing the trend, which is not new anyway, that's been going on. But here is where my big concern, my big concern, which, by the way, guys, if you live in that part of the world, and, and, and we notice that that's the reason, one of the reasons why we ask, where are you joining us from? Just to, first of all, know where you're from here. Uh, what concerns me the most, you know what it is, Ross? Is that with what's going on, with the U.S. policies now, with this, the, in, the quadrupling of the U.S. troops. And by the way, we're not talking thousands of troops, but it's a small number. But it's still, because first of all, it violates that one China policy. But the big concern I have personally is whether the conflict is going to be is going to be an open conflict between the U.S. and China, or it's going to be a proxy through Taiwan, which means we will see a replica of Ukraine in Taiwan. No, thank you. Yeah. So that is where the concern I have. About what this is going. You know, I'm old enough that I I, I was just a, a young man, but yeah. I saw the U.S. put advisors into Vietnam. Mm. That's how they started, and then we saw what 68,000 Americans killed, probably a quarter of a million injured, and who knows how many Vietnamese that were harmed by that war. But they started with Advis putting advisors Advis in. Yeah. Well, usually, yes. I, I was in the government, so I'm not I'm not denying this. You know. We used to, when I was in the military, and even after that, when I still travel for the U.S. governments, yeah. yeah, we will connect with some advisors that go to some countries. So it's very concerning. 
And again, that is my big concern of where I see, how do I see the conflicts moving forward. And also there are other two elements that, that uh, sort of convince me to sort of move into this direction. One of them is a statement by a four-star general in the US Air Force that is, he's declaring that the US military, uh, he was declaring to the Air Force that they need to be prepared for a war with China in two years. And the second one has to do with the statement by none other than U.S. ambassador to China. You know his name is no Nicholas Burns. Okay. Now, guys, don't confuse William Burns with Nicholas Burns. William Burns is the CIA director. Nicholas Burns is the U.S. ambassador to China. Well, what he said basically is, and I had a, I had a tweet, by the way, that I pulled out from. I don't know if you follow me on Twitter or not. I'm at D. Wararu. You can follow me there. But what I found there, Ross, was that the idea, it was very concerning. The idea that uh, the ambassador is saying that the world should not, or, or Asia, that is, should not follow China. It should follow the leadership of the U.S. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. People in Asia, aren't they blind? They're not stupid. They're smart enough to see where things are headed. And when Nicholas Burns saying, and I quote here, we are your rightful leaders. So <laughs> that's what he's saying to Asia. This is more than comical. And you take a look at the economics here, and who's all these Asian nations, who's their number one trading partner? Oh, it's, it's China. China. So their economies are dependent on good relationships with China. Oh, that's for sure. Let's look at Australia as a good example. Yeah, now they are dealing with that. Well, because the idea of uh, uh, the concern with the with where things are going, and you see statements emanating from U.S. Uh, 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 high-ranking officers or officials, whatever you want to call them, that, that just contradicts reality. And, and it's almost... Personally, the way I see it, it's like an insult to people in Asia. Absolutely. Yeah, that's how, if I were an Asian, a person from Asia, I would interpret this as an insult because that's what it is. You know? you know, and a whole lot of them, we used to be British colonies and yeah. they were terribly mistreated. You think they're going to forget that? No, they won't. They won't. And this is where, uh, again, just to tie it back to what we were talking about earlier, how I see the conflict m moving forward or yeah. the tension. I won't use the term conflict yet. <laughs> but the tensions, because it's going to either be an open war, which I know, which I don't foresee, or it's going to be a proxy. Let Taiwan be out front while we are doing whatever we're doing. It's the same setting like what we're seeing right now. Well, with some sarcasm, let me say, it, so say this. Yeah. You know, if Taiwan engages mainland China and they lose 250,000 soldiers, those are acceptable losses. Whoa. Come on. Yeah. yeah, that's not. To who are they acceptable losses? To the to the Taiwanese? Yeah. Well, uh, Taiwan people obviously uh, will remember, remember when we did the video about the uh, local elections. Yes. And how they rejected her party. Oh, yeah. Of, uh, uh, Sai. Yeah. Yeah. Because that was a clear indication. Taiwanese people do not want to be dragged into uh, another scenario like Ukraine. Yeah. Ukraine. To, to 2.0. Yeah. Yeah, no thanks. Let alone the idea of, and here is where I found very, very problematic, uh, tied to this one China policy. You know, even if we are to say there's a problem in Taiwan uh, with between Taiwan and China, isn't that an internal affair for China to deal with? It certainly is not our problem. Yeah, yeah. It's no different than what, what, what happened in Europe with Ukraine? Isn't that a European issue? But Europe is so weak. As a matter of fact, Scholz, the German chancellor, who I believe is very, very, very weak, was the idea of he was pressured to just say or go along with the U.S. policy. That's how... Uh, even though at the beginning, you know what I was saying? I was saying that, well, this is a, a, a security issue in Europe. Yeah. So if Europe can take care of it. Well, 
Europe can't. It's so weak. It's the same argument that we could make that in the case of Taiwan, is a Chinese internal affair matter. So let the Chinese deal with it. Well, the German people take to the streets saying, we don't want this. Uh, yes, they don't. But the idea that for us pushing pushing this, this narrative of, you know, sale of weapons. Now you get the upcoming trip by McCarthy, right? McCarthy's talking about... Speaker of the House, by the way. Nancy Pelosi, too. <laughs> Come yeah. on. That was, a, that was beyond a fiasco. And he's talking about doing a, doing a similar trip. My hope is he comes to his senses and doesn't do it. Yeah, yeah. I'm not surprised at all this was because I read, uh, and, and I, uh, I think we need to put a link for it. So I read the report by the uh, United States Department of Defense 2020 assessment regarding China. And that's basically what is saying that most of the uh, conflict will be mainly geared towards China. Now, that begs the question. And you know what the question is, Ross? The question is, how come with all that's going on and the attention that the United States is giving to Ukraine, still the focus is on China? Well, I have my own private answer with that. It's, Ukraine's already a lost cause and they know it. But China's really the ad, the economic adversary in these people's eyes. Yeah. Ukraine is more or less an impotent country, if they even exist as a country next month. Yeah, but, but there are far, far deeper issues with this, and one of them has to do with the technological advances China has achieved. It is, <clears throat> I believe, and I feel comfortable saying, it is at the core of these tensions between U.S. and, and, and China. You know, we keep referring to it. One million scientists and engineers come out of Chinese universities every year, and they put a lot of them to good use. Yeah, and, and I believe this is where what's at the core uh, for, for this conflict that's going to drag on, because now you get uh, uh, China uh, uh, is in position to produce the five nanomillimeter uh, 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 chips. Really? So, yes, yes, they did. They did produce, I, I, I checked it, I researched it, and they did, it's not a hoax, it's not a, they did. Now, they still have a long way to go for three nanometers, which yep. is the advanced. Well, advanced people point. don't understand just how difficult this chip manufacturing is. Yeah, that's, that's correct. And this is where we say, we feel comfortable saying that technology is really, microchips is at the heart of this conflict. So the U.S. will do whatever. Uh, once again, I find myself going back to the main arguments as far as the conflict. Is it going to be an open one directly with China or is it going to be through a proxy using Taiwan? And I'm leaning more towards the latter than the former. Well, I wonder what's going to happen in terms of the next election in Taiwan. Because this, there's, there's a lot of of energy going from mainland China into the next round of elections in Taiwan, yeah. saying, hey, yeah. how about reunification? And the people in Taiwan, from what I can, I know s some people there, and these are not dumb people. They, they're looking at Ukraine saying, we don't want to be Ukraine 2.0. 2. 2. Yeah. We don't want to be in a proxy war with basically our own people. Well, the whole Asia doesn't, uh, I mean, when was the last time you heard a major conflict in it's been a while. I mean, they've been living in peace, at least fifty, at least seventy years. Yeah, my last trip to that part of the world, they were in two countries. I went to Cambodia, you know, what I'm saying? and oh, I went yeah. to Thailand. And that was a few years ago, mm -hmm. and I talked to locals there and had a conversation. Everything seems to be okay because you know, all of a sudden now we are fermenting. And when I say we, I'm referring to the collective West, including NATO, because. As I, and I did mention this before, uh, majority of people do not know that there is a proxy war in Philippines. Philippines is being used as we speak. And the idea of the, the, the military bases being now revamped, the question becomes is why would you revamp the military bases for? Unless you do have a plan in place. 
You know, I don't know how many people have noticed that the Atlantic Ocean is pretty darn far away from the South China Sea. Yeah. I mean, it's... <laughs> so that is that is one of the great concerns that, that we see moving forward. What prompted us to really address this issue? That's why we wanted to address this in this live stream. So it's because uh, I do see Philippines... I've been noticing since Marcos Jr. Bon Bon came oh, yeah. to power that he is walking a delicate balance between his economic aspirations uh, for China, with China rather, and his security concerns with the U.S. So he can do both. And I think his last trip to China, uh, and I'm starting to feel comfortable saying that uh, he did not show his true colors when he went to Beijing. Oh. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Because right after his return, signed the paper, with the Secretary of Defense, U.S. Secretary of Defense, Lloyd Ex Austin. To expand the bases. So, so you can't, and, and if it were the case, why didn't he discuss this with China when he was there? Unless you are playing both sides. Well, the Chinese are not stupid. They're going to see that oh, like, sure. in, in a heartbeat. I'm sure. And the welfare of the Filipino people, economically speaking, it's where the concern is. So, so I see the same scenario moving forward with Taiwan, which is going to create really, really different dimensions, given how, as I said earlier, quadrupling the number of advisors in Taiwan, selling a million dollars package of weapons, and having a high delegation uh, from the U.S. Congress visiting Taiwan soon. <laughs> Honestly, as we were researching all of this, yeah, I really had to struggle to overcome the emotions I felt with it, but I'm sort of getting a handle on it now. Oh yeah, this yeah, is yeah. this is hopelessly irrational. Yeah, it is. So when you hear statements by Blinken warning China, the Secretary of State, who the heck are you to be warning countries? And when you're saying, you know, we gotta uh, stand with democracies. I mean, let's 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 call a spade a spade. It's our country here, but. You know, when it's time to criticize the country for doing wrong, that's to me what a good citizen does. That is our civic duty. Yeah. yeah. We're supposed to do that. Yeah. I don't care when those that critic that's saying, where well, you guys criticize America. No, that's nonsense. That's a weak argument. If you got nothing of substance to say, don't put these idiot comments because they don't make any sense. Second thing is it's the responsibility of the citizen to challenge the government when it does wrong. And we are doing wrong. Yes. So, I mean, I look at it now, just a, one, one of the issues on a different uh, uh, topic here that came up to my attention is that uh, Iraq, recently, the government of Iraq just dropped the dollar <laughs> and embraces the Chinese yuan for its trade. So the question becomes, are we going to resend troops back to Iraq? You know, because here's the thing. In the Middle East, things are brewing. You have the, on the tip of your tongue how many uh, Iraqis were killed oh, with the U.S. intervention? They were, all I know is about the kids. They were about a million plus that they died. Okay. And so the Iraqis are supposed to forget that? No, they won't. They won't. No. Oh, Elizabeth told me to change the mics. So there we go. That sounds better. I'm sure you guys. Is it better? Can you guys hear me? Can you give a thumbs up if you hear me? Okay. All right. So. So the United, it seems like the, the 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 government is masterful at ruining the reputation, yeah. making deals that that they break, and creating enemies all over the world. Yeah, it becomes uh, literally the way I see it is we have we have abused our our power. We abuse it. When you abuse your power, that's it. Because power, it doesn't mean you're gonna have to dictate to other people. It means you're gonna work in coordination with other people. Just because you have a power doesn't give you the right to just do whatever, say whatever, and abuse whomever. It just doesn't work that way. And apparently. For us, for the last three or four decades, we have kind of strayed away from that responsibility of the ideal. Yeah, we came up after World War II as the, the global leader in the world. And yes, we 
were and still are to a degree. But if you notice over decades after World War II, we start to go down because we moved away from the meaning and the responsibility that goes with being in a powerful position. And that's where we are today. You know, I looked at some things that I understand that Cuba is not going to be an issue with Russian intervention in Cuba. Have you heard that one? No. Uh -uh. Well, let's not talk about it too much then, because I just heard rumblings about it. Yeah. And of course, Cuba is a sovereign nation. They can do what they want. So the whole the whole idea of how now you're going to have to think in terms of, OK, what lies ahead? Well, what lies ahead is when you start seeing uh, policies like what we are embarking on right now with quadrupling the the numbers in Taiwan, with sending the delegation, high ranking, you know, speaker of the house, by the way, is a third in line for the presidency. So that's a very symbolic, you know, you look at the optics in international, as I always say, in international relations, context matters. The fact that speaker of the house is landing in Taiwan in a military C-130 or even whatever. That tells you the story right there. So it becomes very problematic for us because you have individuals advising the president that they can speak the truth because they are only yes, sir, yes, ma'am. Instead of doing what's right, because what's right is to tell the boss when he is wrong or she's wrong. And so kissing up seems to be the way promotion and so on happens. Well, I, as I opposed to any kind of integrity. You're absolutely correct, Russ. I was in Washington and I saw it with my own eyes. Why do you think I left? <laughs> yeah, I, I couldn't well, do it. Well, knowing, knowing who you are for so many years, yeah. it's not a question about integrity. Yeah, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it, Russ. You know, I won't kiss up to anybody. It doesn't matter who. Even if the Pope comes to me, which I don't care for the Pope, anyway, you know, that's that's another matter altogether. Yeah. It's the idea of, because you start to think in terms of, you know, why are you in that possession to begin with? What are, what are your objectives? And who are you to serve in a capacity like that? You know, this is not about your interests. This is not about your political career. This is not about your legacy. This is about the welfare of the constituents that put you there. And to me, yeah, the way I look at it, if you are not up to the task, get the hell out. Simple as it is. There's no other way around it. It's because we tend to be very politically correct. Oh, we can say this, or we can say that. You know, I like your solution of term limits. Uh, uh, yeah. I just, would that solve any number of issues about entrenchment in the, in the power play that goes on constantly in Washington? I believe it will, Ross. You know, if only people, if only Americans understand that in the Constitution, Article 4 will allow the states, up to 21 states, if they sign a petition, it is, if they sign a petition and send it to Congress, Congress, by law, will have to put that issue to vote, put it on the floor, and vote for it. You know, I don't even hear much, much about it anymore. I remember many years ago hearing about it. Then it went away. Yeah. Well, that's why we're going to do a course about just these issues of the government. We're going to be doing, by the way, of course, down the road. We're working on putting it together here. But what are we going to be tackling is the idea of the structure of the United States government and really how it became the way it is today and how it impacts your daily life. That's what we're going to be talking about. So, Excellent. So we can't talk about that stuff here <laughs> on this platform. You all know why. You know, it's, it's even shocking to me that I'm saying this. In a so-called democracy, and you are being censored. That's what I found very, very, very unacceptable, unrealistic, and, and it just uh, put a big question mark on, on, on the so-called democracy. So people in America need to wake up. Democracy is nothing but an illusion. Straightforward. Well, if you want to know what we really think... <laughs> Come to Rumble. <laughs> We're gonna go to Rumble after this. So make sure you help out on that. So, so, so yeah, when you see, for example, I see statements by uh, Secretary of State uh, Blanket 
and and he's he just came back from none other than Euro Asia. He went to Kazakhstan, you know. And he made a stop in Uzbekistan, and I spent time in Uzbekistan back then. So, and you all know why? You know why? Because that part of the world is going to be crucial to how things are going to move forward geopolitically, financially, and economically. That's that's how I see it moving forward. So. Uh, so this is what we wanted to really address with you guys just to, and, and again, we only talk about what matters. We don't waste time on nonsense. <laughs> and we all know that. And we encourage you to pay attention to the trends and patterns because our whole presentation today was showing you trends and patterns, which allow you to predict what's coming and to prepare. Indeed, indeed. So, so what we're going to do, guys, is we'll, we're going to open up the floor for a few questions because we have to, once after this, we're going to have to go and reset everything for Rumble, so which we hope you guys can join us. We'll be talking, by the way, about CIA recent statement about China. You truly want to know the background story. So so let's see if we have any question from anybody. And Elizabeth's going to help us out with this, by the way. And we'll answer them, and we'll just go from there. Yes, we do. First of all, can you grab Ross's microphone? <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> Is that better? <laughs> yeah, sorry, guys. There's a microphone problem. I realize it. There's nothing I can do about it. That means time to go get another microphone. Or, what do you think, Russ? <laughs> call it technical support. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Athena, Athena Wu. Question. Do you see a chance that Europe would gain independence from the U.S. Mm. and become one major power in the new multipolar world? Now, in Europe, normal people have brainwashed politicians and puppets. Not a fat chance, I think. Ooh, sad to say it. There are many reasons to that, on, all joking aside. Europe has been talking about, for example, establishing its own security the equivalency of NATO. They couldn't do it. You know. Second thing, politically speaking, the leadership in Europe is so weak because you look at the fragmentation that exists within the EU, the European Union. You know, And the reason for that is this is why the United States sort of pushed for the Ukraine conflict. Because who pushed for Ukraine conflict? It's not Europe. It's the US. And the reason for that is because we wanted to ensure that Europe win not stand on its feet economically because the energy from Russia. That is the reason why we are the win what we are the win. That is the reason why we established a military base inside Germany with almost over 50,000 troops after World War II. We set up everything for that reason. So as far as Europe standing up, I don't see that happening. Uh, I will be shocked and I will hope for that but i don't see that happening anytime soon ross you want to add something to this psychologically <laughs> well i was gonna i was gonna do the if history repeats itself and we certainly seem to think that it tends to repeat itself what we know is that when berlin and moscow are hand in hand that all of europe benefits and i can quite imagine that the united states does not want that yeah, that's for sure. So short answer is no. Okay, next question. Uh, do you think the U.S. Oh, from Tommy Putra, and thank you for the super chat, Tommy Putra. Thank you, Tommy. Do you think the U.S. Parliament and U.S. citizens know what a war in Taiwan could grow to a hot war with U.S.? The short answer is no. They have no idea. As a matter of fact, uh, a recent article just came up this morning, believe it or not, on the Foreign Policy Council. Yeah, the Council on Foreign Relations. I'm sorry. The Council on Foreign Relations. And, and, and on its title, it says, Americans have no idea what a war with China will entail. Yeah, most Americans do not know. They don't even grasp the danger and severity of engaging China militarily. I'm not saying 
we should be scared of China or we are scared of China. All I'm saying is the massive distraction that will incur or will result if a military conflict ensues. Okay, uh, quasi B. Uh, David, can we, US, actually fix the government without burning it to the ground and starting over? Oh, what a good question. Yeah, you want to? No. I'm... Yeah, it's the idea of, uh, it, it is a great question. And, and as an Americans, yeah, I, I applaud you for even thinking that deep because majority of us Americans do not think at that level. And the short answer, sadly, is no. And the reason being because it is not the people in Congress. It is not the people in the White House. It is not uh, the officials, ambassadors, and so forth. It's the system, the way how it is set up. The system has to change from the bottom up because... If you only notice, and this is why we decided to do the course about the government, because a lot of Americans do not understand the structure of how the U.S. government is right. This has been from way back, and I refer only to the last 150 years. And what happened the last 150 years, both political parties, Republicans and Democrats, have agreed to just manage, control, and manipulate the masses by switching back and forth between the two political parties. That means the system's still the same, but the players change. And if you don't change the system, nothing will change. I completely agree. Yeah, yeah, that's the way I see it. Why does mass media... Oh, okay. No. Oh, I got the idea. Yeah. Well, mass media stays quiet because who owns mass media? The oligarchs, the power elite, who are benefiting outrageously from continuous wars, continuous conflicts. They have a vested interest in keeping the American public ignorant of what's really going on. So they lie to them. Yeah. They lie to us. Yeah. The UN, I won't count on the UN. The UN is toothless. The UN has no power. That's one of the reasons why uh, uh, if there are any involvements in the UN in any foreign conflicts, uh, the U.S. will not be part of it because the U.S. will not fall under the command of the UN. That's one of the reasons. Second one, mass media, and it's mass media, as Ross mentioned, it's because it's owned by corporations that are in cahoot with the governments. You know, I like the, what we just talked about, the idea that Iraq dropped the dollar and and embraces you uh, and and it's using the chinese you want did any western media pick it up on story zero none you know uh, i did a video on it by the way so mm. that's the whole idea of it because the media will not want you to know certain things that exist or happen you know and even if they do they're gonna word it certain ways you're a psychologist ross you know how this what this I see works. is very sophisticated wordsmiths putting together these messages so you can't tell what's going on. I mean, you know, the, we opened the statement with the press secretary saying, in keeping with President Biden's one China policy, we're sending weapons and we're sending troops <laughs> to defend them against the Chinese. Mm. I, mean, I mean, you listen to this stuff and you go, what do you make of this? Well, they're lying to us and they're wor the wordsmiths have been busy yeah. concocting messages that make either no sense at all or mislead us. Yeah. And what facilitates all this, in my opinion, is a population that is ill-informed, that is disoriented, that is brainwashed, and that is confused. I'll and say it. And distracted. Yeah, I'll say it. Yeah. The masses of distraction are heavily at work. Yeah, well, you look at it right now with this Ukraine saga, you know. What are we giving $100 billion for a problem we created, <laughs> you know, at the expense of American people? That's to me where the problem is. Okay. Uh, the next question is from Harry. Harry. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Uh, question. Some people are told that it is a cheap solution to use the Taiwan issue to provoke China for military conflicts to delay China's fast development. Your thoughts? 
I agree with that 100%. I'm in the process of writing a book about China. You know, I've, I've, been, I've been convinced that the way you're going to have to slow a country down is by entangling it into a military conflict. And that's exactly what we are doing. Unfortunately, it's not going to work because China understands also, and I am sure they do, and I hope they do, it will be a strategic mistake if China engages militarily. Because China will not, listen to this carefully, China will not want to change the order, global order, that made it rich. You know, and how, how so, you may ask yourself, is by engaging in a military conflict. Because what's going to happen is you're going to be looking at a, 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 a blockades that's going to happen in South China Sea. You're going to be looking at blockades that are happening in, 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 in North Asia. You know, China will be deprived of access to energy and all that. So China has to be very careful in its way how it moves forward. But you are absolutely correct. And because we're seeing the fast progress China is achieving on technology, you look at its space, you look at the submarines, you know, uh, and we're going to be doing an interview soon with an individual who knows quite a deal about the financial aspect who is from in china by the way so you know another really important consideration is you know the united states is now bordering on almost a trillion dollars in national defense not quite yeah and china has now a little over 200 billion but what that doesn't tell us this, the whole story though because what it, the cost of developing weapon systems and developing their military is about 25 percent that of the united states they get everything. They can do it a lot cheaper. Yeah. And so they said $200 billion. That's a lot of technological development in the military. Yeah. Right, I hope this answers your question. Next question is from James Minzi. Uh, question. Would China likely respond by, by blockading the island completely, daring the U.S. to attack them, or just cutting off exports to NATO nations? Well, China can do that to Taiwan, but you have to look at the optics of it. How will that be translated or interpreted on the global stage? Oh, here is a country that is starving its people. You're going to have to think about the optics. That's why China, you know, China has other means besides military to really bring Taiwan to its knees. But you are going to be there. If, if China does this, it's doing it to the you know, those are Chinese people. You know, I, I just don't see the logic or the rationale for why China will embark on this. This is why China is keep repeating. They wanted to bring Taiwan in a peaceful manner, which I highly recommend and, 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 and support in terms of avoiding any military conflict because you can invade your own country. Yeah. You know, that's just uh, the way I see it. So economically, yes, yeah, they could, but they're not going to do it. Look just what happened with Australia. You know, all China did was cut off trade. Certain aspects, not all of it. And what we saw is that the, the economy in Australia did a swan dive. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. just terrible. Even the government in Australia is lying about where well, the economy is good. Albo is just lying. Given how Australia, by the way, just agreed to the U.S. ambiguous nuclear policy, which means, in a simple term, Australia signed on to what the U.S. is proposing as far as having a nuclear submarines. You know how dumb of, but but at the same time, I'm not surprised because Australia, and I speak of the government here, not the people. Australia has surrendered its uh, sovereignty way back, and it's. Uh, King, King Charles, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you get the idea. Australia, Japan, South Korea, Philippines, I'm putting a big question mark on Philippines. Okay, um, next question is by Royal Brahma. Do you fear nuclear war? The, for, for, is that? Do you fear nuclear war? No, I don't. I don't because it will be the end quick. Right. It will be done. <laughs> no, I don't. But also, I'm, I'm, I'm pragmatic in the sense of uh, 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 no one's going to want to press the button first. Because whoever does first, it's going to trigger a chain of event. But 
we're talking about some major type of nuclear well we we you know we can only talk so much here uh no i don't fear it but i am not really worry too much about it because uh, no one's going to want to press the button first. That's the bottom line to it. I was going to say, no one wants to press the button second either. I mean, yeah, yeah, sure. people all all know the consequence of this. Yeah. Annihilation of humanity. Yeah, that's what it will be. Yes. And it will be no winner. No, if easily anybody, no winner. Yeah. If all any, losers, including everything else that's alive. Yeah. If anybody thinks that, well, whoever has nuclear is going to win. No, 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 no. no. Doesn't work that way. Okay. So, all right. Well, it's truly been a pleasure being with you guys on this live stream. I, I enjoy them. So I like yeah. I like free conversations and all that. So, and by the way, make sure you guys to watch my videos when I do the analysis stuff. We do them on a weekly basis. Uh, those uh, takes me a few days to put together as far as the research and all that. So I kind of, uh, those are specific analysis for you guys to put things in perspective. So, well, we look forward to seeing you next week. Hopefully by then, if you prepare some questions and we'll have again uh, another great conversation. As always, guys, prepare yourself for changing world order. Till next time. Bye-bye.